Hello, in this Visual Basic tutorial, I am going to show you exception handling. So exception handling is a great way of making sure your application doesn't crash. So if you know something or an event may occur that could potentially crash the application by some sort of mathematical problem, which that's the example I'm gonna cover. It could be something else, maybe loading in a file and that file is unable to load. Instead of it just crashing, which is not a good user experience, you need a way to handle this, and that's exceptions. So if I were to do, so if I create two variables, and I do, well, let's just hard code it in. I should just be at 5 divided by 0. So, let's just create variables. You just do this. So if I do dim num1, as integer and I'm going to copy and paste this do num2 as integer then I'm going to do num1 equals 5 num2 equals 0 if I do num1 divide by num2 let's see what we get uh, what's this oh. we'll just assign it to some value so if I do dim you know, val as integer val like so there we go and if I run it as you can see unhandled exception let me just show you something else so if I do console dot right line no matter what you actually do afterwards so I put hello as you can see, hello is not printed out because the application has basically crashed at this point. So we want a way of handling that. And that's where exception handling comes in through the use of try catch blocks. So to do that, you just put the keyword try, click enter, and we got try catch, you know, ex as, you know, some exception. And in here, we can put this line of code now. And in here, if I do console dot right line, I'm going to say naughty 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 division by zero not allowed. And now if I run it, as you can see, it says naughty naughty division by zero not allowed, but the rest of the application still ran. Because there was a problem here, it prevented it from, you know, crashing. If I just change this to, I don't know, one, for example, and I run it, as you can see, right line is no longer called in the catch block. So the catch merely, you know, catches any exception that's happening. So you can think of it like you're playing in the park, you're throwing a ball around, and if that ball pops, the catch is there just to catch it and make sure you still have a good time. So that's pretty cool. You can make the exception a bit more, you know, specific. Like, so for this one, we divide by zero exception. Then you could actually print out EX. And I recommend that as an extra task that you do that just to see what you get. This, you know, for us will still be the same. And there we go. So we get ex, and it's an arithmetic operation resulted in an overflow, like so. So I'm just going to change it back to regular exception. One last thing I want to show you maybe you want to always run some sort of code regardless of whether or not this fails. You can do that by doing finally. In here, if we do console.right line. Again, you can do whatever piece of code in here you want. You could call another function. You can go crazy. So I'm going to say finally block. Now if I run it, finally block is printed out. So it tried it, it failed, and then the finally block got printed out. Now say if I change this to 1, the finally block is still printed out. So as you can see, the code in the finally section is always printed out regardless of whether or not an exception you know is thrown so that's it for handling exceptions 
There are a few more, you know, sort of nuances to it, but as long as you understand this, you'll be all good to go. I will provide a link with this video where you can see all of the different facets that exception handling provides. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.